before. I think everybody down here has been a dean before. Um, has anybody been in a, in a pickle where you're stuck with absolutely no ideas, nothing to do in a training? No. Um, never? Great! <laughs> It's really great. So I get up, 
and I go put my special object in the center of the circle, and I go back and sit down. And then I'll have Emily get up, and Emily will go, go ahead, Emily, this is my marker. And it's not just me because I love art and crafts. And I put mine in the middle too. Perfect. So we go around our whole entire circle until we have this beautiful pile of special objects that we have created. Now, these are all really important things. I usually tell everyone these are important special things. Sometimes people bring up guitars, cameras, never know. They're going to bring up. So then we go around the circle again. And I stand up and I go in and I find somebody's object and I say, this is Emily's marker, and this is really important to her because she loves art, it's a huge part of her life. And I bring back Emily's object to her. And then Emily goes to the center oh, who's and finds another object. This is Amber's water bottle because she likes to stay hydrated at camp. It's very important to her. Yay, thank you, Emily, you're welcome. So we do that until all the objects are gone. Now, what has always been great about this game is it gives every single child a chance Get up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To get up and talk about what's really special and unique about them. A lot of kids nowadays are not really getting asked what's important to you personally. Not not what do your friends like to do or what do you do with your, your family every weekend. Those are great things, but what is it about you that's special and you think you love and you want us to know? And it has really been a very, very well-received game. So it's definitely, it takes about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how big your group is, and how silly and fun they start having with it. So that's a good game if you really just want to get to know each other, let them kind of speak, have a voice. It's a nice thing. Did you do? No, you can write on every idea. Oh, you did it. Missy, you did it. I don't know. Yeah. Yay. I don't know. <laughs> Anne did that. Anne said teach a song. And then I'm going to teach a song. Anne said start a song. Teach a song. Anne, you have to write teach a song. You have to write teach a song. And then cut it out. Alright. And cut it out. And cut out. Cut it out. Any shape you want. Doesn't matter. It can be a little wonky. We like that. Alright. So, obviously games, games of any kind are a good way to go. They have to be indoor games. A lot of outdoor games can become indoor games. You have to simplify them. Instead of taking long strides, you take little strides. Instead of jumping up and down like crazy, you take little jumps. It's not too bad to change those, but beyond special objects, we always have icebreakers, always have name games. Those are good for the beginning of the week. But the later you get into the week, kids will start to get a little tired of name games. They know each other's names, usually before I know their names. So, I might want them to do it all day, but not always the best. Um, everybody knows in their building, there's a Dean's Box. All right. One of my big projects this year, before camp starts, is to actually revamp these Dean's Boxes so that there are up-to-date, informative, step-by-step -step games of all kinds for you to go to in your Dean's Boxes. I've looked through them, some of those games, a little outdated, so <laughs> I'm definitely going to be working on them. Well, you know, some of them are still great, but I'm definitely going to have, and I have um, packets inside of there. I'm going to have all different kinds of games broken down by age groups, different rules that are better for four Smog's players. Smog's Jewels is coming back around again now, though. What? Smog's Jewels yeah. is coming back around again now that we've had the Hobbit movie. That's true. <laughs> So that'll be a definite, um, a really big tool that you guys are gonna have this year that maybe wasn't as useful last year because there wasn't, you know, oh, there's some pencils, there's a maybe book of prayers, and that's about it. So there's gonna be a lot more tools this year in case you're just really out of ideas. You can flip through it, your counselors can, other such things. Um, one note that I do like to really point out, um, we're gonna talk about vetting our counselors and really picking a good team. Rainy days is an extremely important time to have good counselors. If your counselors are bored, your kids are bored. If your counselors are bummed, your kids are bummed. So they need to really be able to be proactive and make decisions about, they're gonna have connections to those kids that sometimes as deans we don't really get because we don't get all that face time at, in bunk time at, at night. 
and those types of things. So counselors really have a better idea of what these kids want to do. They're hearing things that we don't always get to hear as deans. So having good counselors that are well-trained, vetted, have good creative ideas, really, really important thing for me. Um, we talked about calling the staff. You can always talk to staff to help you out. Staff is here to support you. As resource coordinator, I'm here to support you. I will do everything in my power to help you out, to get somebody who can come over and help you. But in case our staff is stretched thin, sometimes our rainy days are really important times for staff to kind of go close shutters or run around and take care of the things that need to happen around camp. So you can't always get the staff support you would instantly want right when you want it. So it's a good idea to have some ideas in the back of your head about it. One of my other favorite things that I really love to do with the kids is cabin cleanup entertainment competitions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, great thing to do on rainy days. A lot, of, a lot of conferences already have cabin cleanup. It can be a successful or unsuccessful thing, I've learned. Um, usually unsuccessful for my groups. And that's a great time to do it because if you really motivate them, give them a task. Give them a song that they have to write or something that they have to entertain you with when you come in to check their cabin. That can take time. It can also get them to work together, which is great. Encourage them to work with each other's cabins also. And there's nothing better than going in to check out a cabin and have two cabins have merged together to create this beautiful stick that they're giving me now. That's really awesome. <laughs> and it works with their community. So that's a really good idea too. Get them going. Get them a little competitive. Make sure that the... It's the prize they get is not overly sugary. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd like to put in a vote for showing a movie, um, but not just showing a movie that you run to the Dean's Hub to find. Um, you know what your theme is now. There's going to be a movie that you can use to talk about your theme, to talk about you know whatever it is that you're doing. And, um, and that way, uh, you know, you can use it if you need it, but you don't have to use it, but you can, you know, stop the movie when something comes on and you want to ask them a question, you know, about it and then play a little more and then stop it again and ask, you know, some more questions. But, uh, but there are some great movies uh, out there that could go with any of your themes. So if you plan that in advance and bring the right movie, you know, so you're not just showing movies which has a whole lot of swear words um, <laughs> in it for your fifth and sixth graders. So don't show goodies unless you preview it. Just make sure that you write down your idea and cut out yeah, and cut it out. Out. <laughs> So so uh, so a movie isn't horrible unless you just kind of like throw some movie at them to do something. If you're if you got it planned out for for just that rainy day, then a movie can be really uh, you know a good tool. You're right too about watching it first because even a movie that you saw two years ago and said, Oh, yeah, that'd be perfect. And you're watching it again with new eyes, like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. 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 I just did that. So Rating that systems on movies have changed a lot in the last 20 years. Also, some of our go to movies here are from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, rating systems have changed a lot. Some of the PG movies from when I was a kid have some swimmers in them that I wouldn't expect. Some of the PG movies nowadays are what I would never consider PG. <laughs> I would think are PG. If you go to IMDb, so. if you go to IMDb.com, there'll yeah. be usually a lot of movies will have a, a link that'll say kids and movies, and you click on it and it'll go blow by blow, violence, language, sex, drugs, smoking. Yeah. It'll tell you what the lines are, what's happening. You know, yeah. the words used. Yeah. There are several online yeah. resources yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. So if you don't have time to watch the whole movie, the film is because the motion picture There's rating system is completely yeah. subjective. It is. It's it whatever is. happens yeah. to make the people want to work. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And trust me, the kids do not like it when you stand in front of the screen and do a dance during a scene that they're not supposed to see, but they don't enjoy it. I mean, they do like the dancing, but they also then, a lot of times I find, want to go home and go get that movie. Because they want to see what you made them miss. <laughs> so not always the best, depending on what it is. The other resource is Common Sense Media, which is a really good evaluation on several levels, including things like consumerism and how it's represented in the. So besides the kind of obvious sex drugs, um, we've got a couple other categories with commentary. Uh, 
Um, and it's books and movies, right? Oh yeah, uh, it's TV shows. It's the whole <laughs> kit and caboodle. Really great site. Huh. And always, um, if kids, sometimes kids bring DVDs to camp to have in case it's time to watch a movie. Always look at what they're suggesting. It's usually a better idea to take the DVDs yourself and look through them. Make a decision on your own, not to let the kids figure out what movie they want to watch. Okay, so a lot of times they'll they'll already have looked through it. I found this out last year. So. You yeah, might have to use some wonderful language to convince them of watching your movie of <laughs> choice, but it's usually a better option. Because sometimes they pick movies that I've never seen, I don't even know what's in them, so they don't watch it. But during movies, like, post up your counselors, like, it's not a good time to get counselors break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Sometimes you don't have that kind of group of kids. So we do something called 20 minute talent show, where you literally have 20 minutes to come up with something to present. It can be silly, it can be a song. Some kids will bring out something amazing. You're like, whoa, and other kids look it up and tell you jokes that are really funny. It really depends. You know, 20 minute talent show, give them a half hour, then you, you got another 45 minutes of them showing what they've done which is great, and they start to get to know each other and to see just what each other can do. And that's actually a great opportunity to see what little talents your kids have that maybe you don't even know about. You know, we had a kid that could just sing, sing her heart out last year. We didn't know she could sing until Thursday. You know, it was like all of a sudden she got up and sang, and we're like, whoa, can you this? this is amazing. And oh, I love to sing, which well, she hasn't said it all week. <laughs> so we had no idea. So it was a really beautiful moment to, to see her be able to do what she would really love to do. Has anyone else ever tried talent shows? No, Talk good. about the talent shows experience, because there's a couple of things that you have to always think about. Yeah, so shows. we're not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and at least not this year, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can recover. I think um, part of what we learned is Friday night is a very bad time to do a talent show with fifth and sixth graders because they are fried. Yeah. Yeah. But the level of vulnerability that's built into a talent show is not a good match for that time in the right. week. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and it, I mean, laughter over here got interpreted as mocking, mm -hmm. you know, whoever, even though it was unrelated. And just, it was kind of painful. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and frankly, not, not nearly as, I mean, there was none of the kind of connecting that we <coughs> experienced with the kids in other kinds of contexts over the course of the week. Um, it was kind of one kid at a time and it felt very vulnerable. Would you add anything to that? We just sort of said, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think some of that was that it was Friday night, some was just age. You know, and I'm not yeah. sure it would have been that much better where we put, no matter where we put. So you have to really, right. with any of these, you know, we know, we all know that, that you have to kind of take your age group and you know really careful consideration. Yeah, so uh, like, yeah absolutely. Where and how that's going to fit into the dynamic of the week. And probably build it, we we might if I was ever going to do it again, I would figure out how to build in at the beginning some of those guidelines around how we be a supportive audience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes. So that that's sort of said out loud because I'm not sure. And not that anyone actively got made fun of, but it felt like. Well, sometimes things are misinterpreted. The most hurtful things are how they're perceived sometimes yes, versus absolutely. what's actually said. I was definitely a kid that if I got up to do something when I was in fifth or sixth grade and I heard someone laughing, they were laughing right at me. And I knew it, and they were all making fun of me, and I would be that kid who would run and go hide and cry. And it, was a, it would be a difficult experience. So you always have to gauge your groups. Um, usually junior high, right before junior high, very, they're just, you know, kids aren't sure of who they are. They're really figuring out who they are, where they're going, how they feel about all kinds of things. So that can be a very sensitive area. Sometimes breaking them into cabins to have a cabin do a full do the like cabin talent I think show. group stuff would make more sense. Right, mm -hmm. focusing it into groups, getting that kind of camaraderie going, and working together to then present to the whole group. It doesn't really work if your worship is earlier in the week, but even it could work with a sign, but there's always some sort of like side ongoing project that you could have them work on. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you make yourself a really like elaborate like sign for your conference, that can be a go-to off like like no. Um, there's a lot of times like choir kids, kids that are like do like to work on things like kind of in their own space or in their own time. It's really good for that. And any kind of like like flourishes or like worship props or things like that are always good. Like inside alternate activities. Mm -hmm. uh, who's fan of whose line is it anyway? Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Great thing for a cabin potentially. Mm -hmm. you know, like, like you, you make it, you cabin meeting, you know, the team up there, you're, you know, you, you use the, the you got a counselor or your team is the, is the host or whatever and introduce some things and you just rotate the groups and you know, they get to do two or three routines and bring an extra cup to do whatever. Mm -hmm. We play improv games every single week regardless of whether it rains or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one of the kids' favorite, favorite, favorite. It's the park bench. Favorite. We do yeah. that. Well, we that's we love that. That's yeah. one yeah. of them. Yeah. The high school age kids love playing park bench, which is just two kids sitting on a bench, a couch, and they have to try to make the other person laugh. And they have a certain amount of time, and they, they get buzzed off, and the next person goes on, same thing, trying to get one person to laugh. 
actually fetch. It's hysterical. Yeah, it's really funny. One of the things about Who's Line um, that, that I found was that with the younger kids, the fourth, fifth, sixth graders, having the counselors do the stuff and the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders can laugh at the sure. counselors, oh, yeah, yeah. and that doesn't take the, the conferees out of their comfort zone and make them perform, but it's the counselors that are up there. And it also is good because then they see the counselors as humid, as goofy, as, as hey, look at them up there. And it, and it uh, gives them a really good perspective on, on the counselors, too. And Bob is always willing to like, give you applesauce and horrible things like pudding that is <laughs> lying. It's really exciting. Do you, do you do that with stories, too? Um, when I was on staff, we started doing that at Campfire. I don't know if you guys don't do it anymore. But you take a favorite story that you just read time and time again at every campfire and eventually you memorize the book. And you would just randomly pull like counselors and the kids out of the group and have them act it out as it's being read. So no no practice, no nothing to it. And it, it ends up being really fun. It's fun, completely spontaneous. Um, I think the one that we used to do was the three trees. And I'd tell that story. And eventually it got to the point where every time I said and it rains. It didn't matter. One kid always remembered to go over, grab a cup of water, and throw it under the three trees. <laughs> <laughs> Never fit. Of course. <laughs> awesome. Um, <clears throat> actually, counselor, counselor games was my next suggestion. Um, especially with young kids. Works great with high school kids, but uh, young kids, any counselor games, even getting to know you counselor games where they get up and they hold up signs that have facts about them and the kids have to figure out which counselor this fact goes to. Oh, yeah. oh that's really fun. fun. Yeah. It's fun yeah. because the, you know, counselors can laugh at themselves, can laugh with each other. This is a really important thing to show to the kids because that helps to get them to understand that it's okay to laugh with each other. We're not always laughing at each other, we're laughing with each other. And sometimes laughing at each other isn't a bad thing, it's a good thing. So getting the counselors to get very motivated again it goes back to having really good counselors. Ones who are prepared, who have some kind of idea in their head. Even if they just have one plan that they can lead, that is awesome and a good thing to have. So we'll definitely talk more about vetting counselors. I think that's tomorrow that we talk about that. Oh, sorry. One thing that we do in videos that works really well in here is the cabin mate game, sort of like the newlywed game. So we tell them at the beginning of the week, hey, there's going to be this cabin mate at the end of the, the week. Get to know your fellow conferees and your counselors. And they'll they'll try frantically to get to know each other. Sometimes they'll, they'll create silly little ways to get around the rules. But it's, it's a good way for them to bond. And, um, and it's just really fun seeing them get up there. They really get into it, and it helps them come together as a community within their cabins. So. Awesome. Um, we have lots of tools at, as far as what resource can bring you. I mean, there's lots of different things that resource is able to bring you. Um, we can bring you tennis balls to see how many tennis balls you can stack on there and lying down. We can bring you craft supplies. We can bring you all kinds of things. Um, usually having having some kind of idea of what you'd like to do on your rainy day so you can let your resource person know as soon as possible is a good plan. Even if you're not going to do it till 3 o'clock, let us know at breakfast what you want. We'll get you everything you need as soon as possible. And if you have to all of a sudden fly by the seat of your pants, change your idea, you got everything you need right there. And you'll have ways to contact all your, you'll have a resource person like you always have. You'll also be able to contact me. I'll be checking in with conferences throughout the day. So you guys will definitely have plenty of support for things that you might need. So if you think of something, but oh my goodness, we need hula hoops. We can bring you hula hoops, so don't worry. Even um, if you try to do something like really small, um, I know last year we in Watson uh, we did uh, the game where we took Oreo cookies and we put them on our foreheads. And then you have to leave it on your face until you can eat it. You have to get it in your mouth. You have to get it in your mouth without dropping it. And that's what we did with the kids. And it takes a while because you drop like a million Oreo cookies. But some of the kids and did it. And it's, it hu it's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really funny. And something lighthearted like that, even if they're having like 
a really intense week, and it's one of those conferences where they're, you know, you're thinking about God a lot, and you're doing a lot of thinking, and something really silly and fun and mindless like that can be um, a nice little break for the kids. You make them eat the floor Oreos? <laughs> I ate all the floor Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Is that a rule? Yes. So, <laughs> assuming no thunder and lightning, is there any reason why we can't take children outside in the rain? I was actually, I was going to ask that, but I don't believe that there is. There's no, no problem with that. We, can, we, tend to have a, we tend to have a higher um, incidence of spring ankles and stuff. So, you know, because it's wet and, and you know, like... But I mean, I mean that they can, like, nature walk in the well, rain, right? Where you spring might spring hear and feel and smell things differently <laughs> if you're out. Absolutely. I was also thinking running around on the field, but... <laughs> you know, so we have the My plan B is we should plan it. The nature the nature hut this so year is going to have fire. a big packet of games that they, they're going to have available to them. So that's actually one of the other things that's being put together. And I can definitely make multiple copies and slip it right into the Dean's packets and the Dean's boxes. And there's rain hikes. There's windy day hikes. There's all kinds of different hikes that I'm actually going to be putting together for the nature hut. So, and um, also things like how to measure rainfall with a cup, a ruler, talking about what rainfall does in the northeast of Connecticut versus down at the shore. These are all things that we can talk about because we definitely really want to still interact with the kids about the world around them. Like, like Ann was talking about, there's not a lot of interaction with kids these days outside. It just doesn't happen as much. Um, a lot of kids don't even realize where rain comes from sometimes. <laughs> so I found that out last year in the Nature Hut that, that they didn't really understand why it rains. So that was a very simple discussion that they got really into, and it was such a simple thing. Um, one of the things that's really important when it comes to inside games is when you start using like paper, pencils, cups, markers, um, you really want to focus on limiting the amount of supplies that you're burning through. When kids have nothing else to do and they're just you know cutting out shapes, there are so many shapes they'll cut out that they'll just throw away. And that's paper they don't need to throw away that we could use again. So really trying to, to teach them about being sustainable and resourceful with the tools that they have is a really big focus for what resources we're talking about. Cammy's going to be talking about it as well. Big, big deal this year at camp. Really important too. So definitely kind of keep that in mind. If you feel like it's going to use an unnecessary amount of materials, maybe talk to me or talk to Pammy and maybe we can give you a better suggestion of how you can do that exact same thing without using so many resources or making it more sustainable. So, um, oh, some more ideas that we've done before, which actually we're going to play this game tomorrow, so I'm not going to talk about it. Um, strike a pose is a really fun one. Uh, strike a pose, you can, if you have some wonderful musicians or singers in your group, they can make the music, which is great, or you can play music. Um, your resource person can either come over and show you how to set up the music in your building. You don't have, like in the winterized buildings, we have CD players and stereos and all that good stuff. In other buildings, we can get you those things so that you can have music. But um, musical chairs, great game. Strike a pose is literally where you, <laughs> I like to have the kids do it two, three at a time so they're not feeling too alone. But sometimes they want to be by themselves, where you literally kind of have them like sock hop style, two lines, you play the music, and have one of them go and you turn off the music and they just stop. Strike the pose. See what the kids can come up with. Um, any types of dances. Having a pajama fashion show is a pretty fun thing too. A lot of kids, you know, like, or a backwards fashion show where they put their clothes on backwards and show off their clothes to us is another <laughs> fun thing that we've done, which has been pretty, pretty entertaining. Again, counselors, do you need to Slightly pay attention to what they're walking out wearing. Sometimes our high schoolers can be a bit brave, so <laughs> keep their eyes open. But um, can be a lot of fun, and you can again turn on music for that. Um, there is my page. my pages while we're on here. Oh, write a new camp song or prayer, which is one of my favorite things to do with. with
with kids. Um, you might not be able to get your whole group to do it, but breaking into groups to do different things, whether they want to play board games, whether they want to play card games, whatever they want to do. But writing a new camp song or prayer is actually a really simple thing to do. Take a tune that we all know, Mary Had a Little Lamb, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Bingo, any of these songs that we just all know in the back of our heads. Well, maybe your kids don't know, we can teach them. And just alternating the lyrics really simply. It doesn't have to be a big jumble, it doesn't have to be genius lyrics. Just something simple, some hand motions, and you can share it with the whole camp. And encouraging the kids to do this and enforcing the fact that it could become a camp tradition, that's where traditions come from. They come from somewhere. They don't just, we're not just handed traditions <laughs> that we follow. They, they, this come from kids and from counselors and from their ideas. And writing new camp songs, I, I would love to hear some new camp songs <laughs> from kids. So definitely a really simple, simple idea. I mean, taking Mary Had a Little Lamb, replacing it with a grace for, for lunch, not very, not very difficult. Especially if your kids are being nice and creative. Always fun. Resurrecting some of the really old camp songs. Yes, we could do that too. <laughs>
You can hear the, they hear the same ones. They remember the same ones. So you can break them into five groups and get the same scripture from every single group because they all know John 3.16. You know, that's, they, they've all heard it. So you ask them their favorite scripture, they remember that. They remember, you know, shout to the Lord. They remember, you know, sing with symbols. They remember the psalm. They remember this. But they don't know all these other little ones. And introducing those to them can be really great. And sometimes kids will have posters in their room at home that have scriptures on them that they will have just ingrained in their brain. Some of the greatest scriptures we have actually kids knew from posters on their wall at home which is really neat to hear them actually talk about why they loved this scripture and what it meant to them. That was a really cool experience to hear them say. A uh, theater game that we played with the clowns was with a towel. And you use any, many of the kids can volunteer their towel. And what they do is we go around first in a circle and we pretend, well, what could this towel be? And so somebody will lay it out on the floor and stand on it and go, what's this for? You know, any, a, a cape. Uh, you know, any number of things. We'll just try to come up with, everybody trying to come up with a different thing of what this towel is. But then you can morph into, well, if this towel was, how do you feel about yourself today? What would you do with the towel? If this towel was, what's your relationship with God like? What would, the, what would you do with the towel? <laughs> so it, it can, you can build some trust with first breaking down the walls and then moving into some nonverbal ways of expressing how you feel about any number of things. We do that with a whole box of items. We have a box, I mean, there's mm -hmm. anything from, you know, applesauce cups to markers to band-aids to kind of really squishy Ooh, alligators. Like there's, I mean, yeah. and we just pour the box on the floor. We don't tell the kids what we're doing. They take an item and we start with easy questions, like talk about how this item is um, your life or your experience at camp. And then we go talk about how this item describes God, talk about how this item describes, and like, these kids will have like a stuffed alligator, and it's amazing. They come up with these like theological understanding of God that has to do with this stuffed alligator that's like way behind anything I could have come up with. And so um, it's amazing when you just throw some items in front of them, what they come up with. And so we've been, we cultivate a box of items. But you don't know the question, know the question beforehand. That's important, yeah. And everything that you can, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You're just talking about the Bible verses, another another game that I thought with the teams. I thought she was going to have a And we could have done it on the Sliding! Yeah. I think that's our match. Um, games I did with the teams that, that would be a good indoor game and, and exposes them to survival stuff, almost without them really knowing you're doing it, which is coming up with a staff and make cards, each with a name for God, that um, some of them are names that we actually find in the Bible, right? and metaphors for God, and then added a bunch more that might conceivably be found in the Bible, but we don't. But they're not actually there. You know, God's a rabbit. God is a mother hen. God is a mountain. God is Lord. God is King. God is Queen. God is. And you give, you break them up in teams. You give each team their stack. You say make two piles: the ones that are in the Bible and the ones that aren't. And it's a, it's an opportunity to talk about metaphors for God and diversity of images, it also keeps them busy for a while, and it's really fun to see what they presume might be in there that's not. And the things that they say are ridiculous and clearly aren't in there, like God is a chicken, <laughs> which is like, certainly not anywhere. The mother hen is. Right, well, that's good. I count that as the same thing. <laughs> so that's it. Unfortunately, we lost track of doing our maze. I was going to have you guys all put it back together, which you can still do if you have a piece. Uh, but <laughs> last little note, just everything we've talked about today, beyond how it can help you on a rainy day here, um, what, just like what Ann said, we're living in a generation of being plugged in. Um, when the power goes out on kids at home, they are just lost at what to do. I, I babysat kids of all ages who just do not know what to do when the power's out. This is a great opportunity to give them lots of cool ideas that they don't have to be plugged in for, which is really important. It's something they can take home and hopefully share with their friends, with their families, with whoever they're stuck with when the power goes out. So, all right. Well, some of that. So you want yeah. to some of them. And then we have this one with nothing on it. <laughs> so. But I like the I like the comma. I don't know. God is still speaking. <laughs> I like the comma. It's teach a song. <laughs> All right. So we wrote down a bunch of.
the ideas again in your Dean's boxes. We'll have wonderful new packets in it. They're going to have all kinds of ideas. You can always try to get a hold of me. You'll talk to me at Dean's meeting every single day, so you can always check in with me. Your resource aide will be checking in with you at breakfast, hopefully again at lunch, maybe at dinner. So that will be the goal anyway, to get them to check in. We're going to type this up to you. It'll be available to you guys. And I think that's a pretty good question. How do you guys feel about our discussion? I thought it was